Hey, Evan. What? Why was the centipede late to the football match? Why? Because it took forever to put on its cleats. Oh. <laughs> well, it does have a hundred, um, actually 50 sets. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a very special mega-sode of Engage, a family gaming podcast. My name is Stephen Dutzman. I am your host. EFG is a website where parents like myself and my co-host come together to make sure everyone has the information they need to get their family game on. This is special, and I called it a mega-sode because this is going to include all of the smaller podcasts that we created throughout the week for each of the E3 press conferences. So, if you already listened to those, thanks for the download. If you didn't, great. This is going to be a wild ride. We're going to go through all the press conferences in order. And so there will be music that will play in between. When I say that I am done with the kind of funny press conference, then you're all done. So you have a great day. We'll talk to you next week when we talk about Origins. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a special episode of Engage, a family gaming podcast. My name is Stephen Dutzman. I'm your host, and I'm here with the EFG ground team. I'm here with John, the man behind the curtain. Hey, how's it going? And I'm here with James Pisano. Hey. That's our video guy. I'm here with John Robel, the, uh, the, the extra man that comes and helps us out during E3. Just call me the glue guy. The glue guy. And provider of lodging. Also a project manager, also lodging provider. Um, and I'm also here with Evan, Hi. Who's, who's here on E3 coverage for the very first time, uh, mainly because we're not in L.A. and we couldn't take you to L.A. So, um, we just got done with the Microsoft conference. I'm sorry, the Xbox 2019 media briefing. Ooh. Ooh. Um, I always call it the wrong thing. I realize that I made the overlay for the live stream the wrong thing. It's fine. It doesn't matter. So, um... It was an hour and a half long. They talked about 60 games and a new hardware console, even though they didn't give me enough details. It's fine. Um, We're going to go around the room first, and we're going to talk about just our general opinion overall about the conference as a whole. Okay? Evan, you first. I liked it. Great. It was the greatest. It was the greatest? Well, not the greatest, but, like, it kept me interested and, like, not ADHD all over the everywhere. Pretty good. Which is good. Which is impressive considering a lot of the stuff was stuff that you knew you weren't going to be able to play. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It must have been a little frustrating. So, John, what about you? It was way more entertaining than EA yesterday, which is fantastic. I, mean, um, I, I, do, I do have a bone to pick with them saying they, they talked about 60 games because they didn't. They showed us clips from maybe 60 games. Yeah. He said they were going to show us 60 games. <laughs> yeah. But there were they 60 definitely games did not tell us about that. Are you going to tell, tell Phil Spencer that he got it wrong? Yes. All right. Phil Spencer, you got it wrong. Phil Spencer, I also think you got it wrong. All right. But Fair overall, it was, it was entertaining. They always put on a good show. It was a show. I enjoyed it. There's some neat stuff coming out. Yeah. All right. James, what about you? I liked it a lot. I, you know, it, like everyone said, it's very entertaining. There was it was a good production. Um, I do think they went a little corporate when they talked about the new hardware, but we'll get to that. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's the next topic we're going to talk about. John, what about you? Um, I loved it. Um, specifically, uh, the announcements for Game Pass and what it's going to do in the future, and the fact that they're truly Netflixing. Uh, video games just makes it a uh, guaranteed fifteen dollars a month from me. Like, yeah, I mean that that hands the, down. You hit the nail on the head on that. I think if for not- anything, because I could play on my PC, I could play on my streaming to my Xbox One, or whatever they make next. Yeah, I mean, so. if, if we were to pick, like, one theme for this whole show, is by the way, you should subscribe to Xbox Game Pass. And I know that's been, like, a general theme. Yeah. Like, going back since they announced it. But, man, this was the first... I think this was the first E3 since it was, like, fully unveiled and announced. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, this is the first... Yeah. Like, I know, it wasn't it announced at last E3? It was, but okay. I think it was rolled out. So, this yeah. is the first time that it's been, you know, the pipeline to get games into it has been fully functional. And clearly, it is fully functional. 
Yeah. yeah. Um, because they, they added a bunch of new games literally today. Yeah. Um, so I agree with you guys in general. I thought they did a good job. Um, I'm not going to get super nitpicky about whether or not they told us 60 about 60 games versus showed us 60 games. I think that's a little bit unnecessary, but what are you going to do? Um, I think, they. I mean, if their goal was to get me to want to subscribe to Game Pass, uh, they made me do it. I already, um, I already went on Ultimate. I paid my dollar. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is a dollar to upgrade to Ultimate. Like, that's pretty good. Take my money. Yeah. Um, and I guess for those listening, um, Xbox Game Pass Ultimate is uh, Xbox Game Pass, uh, Xbox Live, um, Gold. Xbox Live Gold. Yeah. Did they say yes. that? Yes. Yep. So Xbox Live Gold and um, Xbox Live on PC. And Xbox Game Pass on PC. And Xbox Game Pass on PC, which is fourteen ninety nine a month, which is... Yeah. An incredible value. I mean, the reality is Xbox Game Pass, straight up just Game Pass, is $10 a month. Right. So for an additional five months, your Game Pass extends onto PC, five which bucks. is... Specifically... I said five look, bucks. You said five months. I thought. Five bucks. Yeah. yeah. For an extra five bucks. Specifically look at Gamefly. Gamefly yeah. play, pricing, $15 for one game, $22 for two games a month. Yeah, Gamefly's like, gotta hate their life, right? Yeah, now. Ne- ne- the Gamefly's gonna die. Over they're still this. in business. Yeah, wow. they're still in business, but they are gonna be gone after this. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it's true. Okay, so um, we'll get. I think we'll, we'll probably be talking about Game Pass like th- throughout this conversation because the vast majority, j- the vast majority of the games they showed today are coming Game to Game Pass, Pass or yeah. let's be real, will eventually be on Game Pass. Um, so, let's talk about the new hardware first. I mean, that's the most exciting thing, right? So, um, they announced the new Xbox. They didn't say what it's called. Or, well, they, well what it's called. Project it's called Project Scarlet. Scarlet um, which is a really annoying name, but whatever. Um, I thought they were showing us a box. I thought they were showing us what it looked like. That it was going to be white and had, like, some sharp lines. Nope, that was a T. Yep. <laughs> um, it's coming out holiday 2020. And most notably, it's going to launch with Halo Infinite. Um, Yay. What? Yay. Yay. I mean, yeah. They, they haven't launched an Xbox with a Halo game since the OG Xbox. Yep. Um, what do you guys think? Let's go with you first, John. Uh, I mean, d- d- did, you, did you like what they were saying? Well, they said the same exact thing Sony said a month ago. So... It's like ray tracing, yeah. SSD, DDR5 or six, six I think, six, mm-hmm. and um, yeah, that those are all buzzwords I know because I build my own computer and I have DDR4 and a ray tracing card and everything. So like, it doesn't excite me that much except for the fact that I like playing console games over PC games. So, but. The fact that it's going to launch with stuff like Tomb Raider through Game Pass, which has ray tracing on the Windows version of it. So if we're getting the Windows version, we will be getting ray tracing. So and it'll be for those so. listening that don't have any idea what we're talking about. What? What's, what's, what in we'll, me? Don't worry about it. I yeah. don't really know what ray tracing is or either yeah. is. Um, James has been given by me the assignment of Helping write like a guide to whatever shenanigans they talked yeah. about and putting it in layman's terms because it actually, some of it actually makes sense if you have right. someone that knows what the heck they're talking about yeah, explaining. Exactly. So James, he's ready for that. Just look for that on the Mothership uh, blog within the next couple of days, um, and I'll probably read it for a podcast. So um, I, I I can appreciate what you're saying there. Yeah, yeah. it's not super it's exciting gotta make because it you've already pretty. done that. It's got to make it pretty and it's got to right. load fast. It's gonna load real fast, look real pretty, and more. I mean, I'm down. And, and and more RAM means more enemies on screen let, at let, the same time. Let's be real. Can we just talk about <laughs> Skyrim with no load times? Like, yeah. the, I mean, I know we even like, Destiny. The new upgrades in Destiny, the load times are getting worse. <laughs> I mean, it makes sense. Like it takes still, two and a half minutes to load into a a PvP yeah. match. Me, oh Which man, I didn't, limited, think about, I didn't even yeah. think about PvP. Yeah, like if everybody's playing on Xbox Scarlet, um, which is what I'm, we're gonna call. We'll call it Xbox Scarlet. Project yeah. Scarlet is really annoying. Um, so Xbox Scarlet, if we're all playing on it, man, we can load into a PvP match with no load times. 
Man, that means more games per hour. Well, I wouldn't say no load times. No load. Because you got if it's not a minute and a half. Right. Yeah. If it's ten seconds or twenty seconds or thirty seconds, compared to a minute and a half, it will be improved. Okay. The thing is that they're just gonna make it so that the things make take up more space, which means the longer load times. They make it seem like the the prettier is the bigger it's gonna be. The the current load times will be shortened up, but like future games like are their load times are gonna be the same length. Unless they are prioritizing the load time. Yeah. Right. But and if he but yeah I, I understand. It's just a matter of what does Microsoft decide they want to do with this capability. Yeah. Do it wasn't they care their, about load times or don't they? Well it, it wasn't their little you know uh, their spiel said their, we care their, their about montage load times. of corporate, you know you yes. know jumble speak. They were talking about how you know they were all RPG gamers and they like load. Correct. They don't like to have load times and yeah. I was get it. playing corporate word bingo and yeah. load times was <laughs> used multiple times. So I would assume that they would that they will cut down load times. And for you guys that don't know load times, whenever you're in an elevator, whenever <laughs> you're walking and like that screen in Assassin's Creed where there's like all digital like waves yeah. in the background, all that kind of stuff, those are load screens. Or you're playing Resident Evil and the, the, door the door is opens. opening. That's, yeah. a, that's the one that's I remember. That's a load time. Yep. It, no, you know what? I'm going to be honest with you. I did not realize that that was a load until like years later. Largely yeah. because I never really thought about it. Right. Yeah, but like exactly. they absolutely sneak load. Like, well, yeah, that, that's just good game well, that was, for the time. That, that was, was ambiance back then. That that like made it. Well, I mean, that was, later well, on, that was, was well just designed like, rather right. than just having a static screen with the zombies still on it. Or yeah. being like, you know... Fallout 4 or Skyrim, and you're sitting there just rotating a death claw for two minutes. Reading and, hints. You know, reading hints. Or, yeah, the hint, hint screens yeah. are going to hopefully, knock on wood, uh, go away. You know? But then again, <laughs> Evan does make a good point that people if, are just going to push it. Right, yeah, you're going to push it. To make it the same. You're eating time. your own tail. Yeah, Todd Howard, yeah. if they tell him. That no the times. current, current yeah, sure. games have no load, will have no load times. He's just going to say, "Fine, then we'll load fifty times as much stuff." So we have. He's the same just going to say, "Hold my Hawaiian punch." Yeah, yeah. He's, yeah. He's definitely <laughs> hold my Fallout seventy six. Okay, hold my Fallout seventy six. We're just going to load literally the entire map. Yeah. Um, you're right. The, Xbox first party might be a little different, but like. You, there's nothing you can do to control some of these crazy people. Yes. So, um, the thing for I guess parents that need to know, um. The time, I mean, the the time of the Xbox One is in the horizon. Is it immediate? No, because the we all know we talked about it. I mean, I was writing gift guides and including the Xbox 360 on, on it until a couple of years ago because these games are still going to be available mm-hmm. and they have big libraries. You could be able to get Xbox One S's. I bet right. you'll be able to get an Xbox One S All Digital Edition next year for like a song. Right. Yeah. I guarantee you there's going to be one for like a hundred bucks Xbox One S all digital edition in some bundle for like a hundred and something bucks. Also, did you Game Pass? Yeah, yeah, it's exactly. It's, because Game, Game Pass, Pass isn't going to go anywhere. Game Pass is going to be part yeah, of the next. You could use it on both consoles. Yeah. Did, did you catch that they said that we, we will be bringing you four generations of content looking better than it ever has before? Yeah, like for full, definite full backwards compatibility. There. Well, that's been that was announced a while ago. Was so, it? Okay. Yeah, yes. that was a while ago. Basically, Xbox said specifically that their goal is to make it so moving forward, every game that is made will be. Uh, it's a, it is an Xbox game. It's not an Xbox 360 game. It's not an Xbox right. One game. It is an Xbox game. So they will always be compatible moving forward. Right. So um, part of that is to encourage digital purchases. Of course. If you buy a game digitally, you will for you will be able to download it on your Xbox, and it will work forever. Right. Um, and and my I think, question is: so, but is it going to be so you get? A game on the Xbox Scarlet. Will you be able to play on your Xbox One? Probably not. No, because the, the hardware couldn't handle it. Probably unless now what they were talking about right. later this year. There's a little hint saying you know coming this fall, you could stream things from their servers. So if, it's possible if they Google Stadia it. That's what it sounded like. They could possibly bring the next generations of games streaming from the cloud. To any Xbox, which is kind of awesome. One, but any would, Xbox One. It would be a while, I would think, because it would kill the, the Why Buy Scarlet. 
Yeah. If I can just stream it to my Xbox One X, why do unless, I care? Unless they don't care. Yeah. It's they, they care. Google Scarlet. They care. But yeah. unless they don't, because they're going to... Unless they don't care, because... But they're going to make all the... But you still have to buy the game. Sure. So... But the and streaming they, they don't necessarily... They, needs... they didn't make money on launch Xboxes. Launch Xbox Ones, they lost money well, on. Well, the launch oh, yeah. one, sure. Yeah, but so... They, they paid people to buy that. So, thing. yeah, they were... So, <laughs> at launch, they right. could... If they allow the streaming thing to an Xbox One and it works Mm -hmm. then theoretically they could be selling Xbox Scarlet games to the Xbox One install base and they could be making more money on those games and then people that want the Xbox Scarlet will do so and then eventually I mean the the hardcore Xbox community is going to buy a Scarlet they're not going to be like alright cool never mind I'm going to just stream to my Xbox One that's casual fans. Like, for example, me, I'm not going to run out and get a Scarlet Day 1. They haven't convinced me to do so, but I would do so if I, the right. only way I could do it was to play Halo. Uh-huh. I'm the guy you're talking about, but hardcore dudes that want the very best of the very best and aren't going to worry about the streaming are just going to go buy it. Sure. Yeah. Um, so, I... Because I, I, they're they're just going to sell a copy... They're going to sell that copy of Halo to me... Without having to lose money on a console for me having it, sure. Um, I think that's at least possible. I don't know that it's a guarantee. I'm not right. going to bet a steak dinner on it, but um, but it's possible. So, th- John, what are you like? Are are you getting one of these? You're like a, you are a the definition of like this typical consumer, right? Like you're right. not a multi console guy. Having a PS4 and a Switch doesn't count because the Switch is the blue ocean strategy, right? Like they right. Everybody needs a Switch, sure. but. Yeah. Is, is, did anything that they said interest you, knowing that the PS4 will probably do all that same shit and just be the PS4? I mean, the PS5 or the PS5 or whatever, whatever it's going to be. Um, yeah, they won't I mean, tell us. But if it's not I mean, the PS5, I'm going to just jump out a window. <laughs> this window, like with like. You know, I mean, it's going to depend on what the I mean what the details are. Like if if you compare it side by side and Microsoft comes out on like no, this is just better. You know, Sony doesn't have a streaming, any streaming available, anything like that. If they don't have an answer for that, then maybe I will. But well, right. well but Sony, Sony just signed. Yeah, Sony just signed with, with Microsoft. Microsoft Azure, which is the right. cloud-based to Flight but, Stadia. So, but that's what I'm saying. It's like, I, unless it's there's something there that is just light years better than what Sony can produce. I'm going to stick with what I got because if they make theirs backwards compatible, that means I can play all the stuff I already have. And they have already said PS5 is going to be backwards right. compatible. That's so. what I'm saying. So I, that means that my library, I can continue to play. Right. And the Xbox One is going to be a song next year. So, and like, the next Horizon Zero Dawn isn't coming to Xbox. Yep. Facts. Facts. With that, but man, Halo. That Halo, though. That, but that's a me thing. I love yeah, this Halo. Yeah, that's a first person shooter. And, yeah. I, but, but. I'm not a Halo fan. I'm, like, I'm not a Halo fanboy. But that's the thing. But right. that's the, that's what's crazy about it. Don't worry, Evan. We're gonna get one. It's gonna be okay. It's for work. <laughs> it's okay, for work. To tell that's what we tell the general. Yeah, that's what we tell the general. Trust me, we're gonna get it. So not all the Halos. <laughs> well, we're not because we're gonna play them uh, over the summer. And the Master um, Chief Collection is yeah. free on Xbox Game Pass. Uh, for fifteen dollars a month, which is such a good value, yeah. it really is it's a good value. value. You know what we should do? I'm just feeding Sell myself it? ideas. <laughs> like, you know what I'm thinking about? We should do um, a, a feature of game what pass do game you... of the week. No, because that's too much work. Um, <laughs> we should sit down and think about what it would be like if you own, like, what your gaming experience would be if you only had the subscription services. Like if all you bought was like you had that. all the consoles and you, you bought Minecraft all the subscription the services, what would your gaming experience be like? You have I mean, Minecraft via Game Pass, so you're good. That, yeah. I mean, done, done. Yeah. I think that's actually kind of a neat idea. We'll look, we'll, we'll look into it. Okay, so that's the new hardware. Um, we'll obviously have plenty more to talk about with that uh, as they tell us more stuff. As you were saying, unfortunately, we have to go through another E3. Yep. Full of stuff. Although they did say that they have um, an Xbox thing tomorrow. They did? 
Yeah, they, they announced it. it was in the corner. They have another Xbox show tomorrow. So basically, yeah, Xbox, a briefing. an Xbox Direct, basically, tomorrow. I don't know how we're fitting that in the schedule, but we'll figure it out. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, God. Um, okay. I think it's at the same time as Kind of Funny. And I'd rather watch the Kind of Funny thing than them, but we'll yeah. figure it out. Um, okay. Let's talk about some games. Um, everybody... We're going to go around the room. We'll start with you, James. Don't start with me. <laughs> okay. We'll start with you, Evan. Think about it. Hardware. You're still thinking about the hardware? Yeah. Well, you got me going. Nerd, okay. Nerd, so nerd I'm going to make you I'm going to make you talk about a game in a minute. You got to think of a family-friendly game. You want to talk about Evan. Four. What is the game that you are absolutely the most hyped for? There are two. You have to pick one. Chances are good I'm going to talk about the three. other one. Pick one. There are three. Pick one. But what if I want to talk about Minecraft Dungeons and Flying Simulator? Okay. Talk about Flying Simulator, because I'm going to talk about Minecraft Dungeons. What's exciting about fl- fl- Flight Simulator? Okay, I was joking about Flight Simulator. I want to talk about the Forza Horizon. Okay, Minecraft. talk about that, because I'm going to talk about Minecraft the, Dungeons. The Lego Forza Horizon DLC. Specifically, it's Forza Horizon 4. It was the Lego Speed Champions Yes. DLC is coming out this week. Um, it's Forza with Lego race cars. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's Forza 4 with Lego race cars. I'm oh, so down. We're yeah. getting Game Pass and downloading Forza just for that. Yeah. yeah. I, I think my I'm youngest might Game actually Pass. force me to go buy an Xbox mm-hmm. just to go get that. Well, but real talk, though, um, that is a unique gaming experience, right? Like, yes. That is a si- Mario Kart. Uh, that's a system seller for someone. Yeah. Someone, maybe not you guys, because no. I think you'll resist it. He's gonna tell you to. Yeah. He, um, you're gonna show him that will. trailer, and he's gonna be like, "No, he saw it." Um, Linda took reaction photos. His face just, melted. That's awesome. Um, that's pretty rad. Uh, the someone is gonna go buy that. Correct. Now I have a question. I'm buying because we're ass. not there. We're not at E3. Yep. Yeah. Will they have the giant forces set up with the ability to race eight, like four or eight cars if at they a time do, in Lego? If they do, it will be on Instagram on Because Wednesday. it needs to be. Yeah. Because last year it was really cool. Yeah, you're playing Forza and giant cars, big simulators, but do it in Lego and drive your Lego Porsche 911. Dude, were, that was not just the Porsches, man. There, I, there was I a know, fucking I, McLaren in there, wasn't there? Like, yeah, they they made a the full size McLaren. Yeah. Um, Jesus. Last year we it was made the Bugatti Veyron. Yeah, yes. the the Bugatti yes. Chiron last year that is drivable. Yes. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so so your yes. hype about this game? Yes. So here, did you care? I mean, did you care at all about Horizons before? No, not, not really. I mean, it looked neat, but not your thing? Not. No, I don't really. Forza Horizon 4, that's the one that's in the UK, right? Yeah, I don't, that's the one that's in the UK. I The only racing game I play is Mario Kart. <laughs> that's legit. Um, okay, so your your thing to bring to the table is the Lego Forza expansion. I can't yes. even get mad at that, John. Mm-hmm. Other than River Bond. <laughs> yeah. EFG game one of the top five EFG games for the show for E3 2017 shout out to those guys um, which by the way the uh, Switch version has Shovel Knight on it what? Shovel Knight is in Riverbond so is Juan from Guacamelee so we're buying it on Switch I mean we're probably going to buy it everywhere so I yeah. love that we <laughs> might not even have to buy it because they like us John what game? Ori or in the Will of the Wisps yeah yep I got to Man. play it a little bit last year. What a freaking mic drop. Just oh, like they opened the convention with that. Or no, what was the first show, the game they showed us? Oh, first game the, was Outer Wilds. Outer, Outer Wilds, Wilds, then they talked about Ninja Theory, and then Bleeding Edge. Yeah. Okay, so they showed some games. It was in the first four. First okay. three, yep. Yeah. Ori and the Blind Forest, such a good game. Mm-hmm. The tree, climbing up the tree, like... I don't like Dark Souls games because I'm terrible at them. But let me tell you, I made it to the top of the tree. So I I I I know 
that when I say that I made it to the top of the tree in Ori of the Blind Forest, if you played it, you know that means that I'm not actually terrible at games because that is a very hard segment. Very hard. Yeah. And it is climbing up a tree as it is being filled with water, and if you touch the water, you die. I mean, maybe you maybe not touch it, but like if you don't, it harms you. It chases you, and how in that trailer? I mean, it harms you bad. I mean, I can't remember exactly, but. It was not good, and it was not easy to stay away from. Um, how many chase scenes? Because it's at the end of the day, it was just a car chase. You're just a yeah. freaking rabbit squirrel thing flying up. How many chase scenes were there? It was like, oh, let's take the tree thing and do that a oh, jillion times. The whole game. Yeah. I mean, I counted five plus lasers. There were definitely some lasers. Yes. <laughs> um. So you're you're all in on Orient Blind. Are you gonna yeah. play that at my house? Yes. Got you. Because. Uh, coming February 11th, 2020. I'm buying that the day it comes out, and you can come over. You can come too. We'll just, we'll just go nuts. All right, fair. James, do you have a game yet? Yes. Spirit Bearer. Yo. Yo. I like that too. Th- that's the one with the, with the, with the, with the boat? Yeah, with the, what yeah, it was, the what, what grabbed you, I mean, like, cool, it, it looked neat and everything, but it looked, I never saw anything like it before. The art style was, was totally different. It looked like they were doing a new thing. It was fun for everyone, not just kids, not just families, everyone. I was like, I need to play this game. Um, so t- let me tell you my reaction, and then I want to hear your thoughts on this. Because So when they first showed the boat, I was like, all right, cool, it's a boat. And yeah. then they zoomed in. Right. And I was like, wait, this is the game? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I mean, look up a trailer, Spirit Fair is the name of the game? Yes. Um, look up the... I mean, if you're listening, look up the trailers. You'll understand what me and James are talking about. I think all of us had the same universal reaction. Yeah. We're like, what is this? Yeah, what am I looking at? Right. I don't know what you're doing. I don't know the moment-to-moment gameplay. But yeah, yeah. I'm with you. Fair, easily one of the games that just needs to be talked about. Um, John Tomlinson, the man behind the curtain. What you got? Or do you want me to go next? Because uh, I have no, to. I because it. I, have, I, I can break the rules. <laughs> go ahead. So, um, game the is like the game that really uh, gathered me was actually Jedi Fallen Order. Yo. It's it's still just it's the the extra part the extra play that they showed looked amazing. Exactly. No, I went up to eighteen eighteen? Yes. Yeah. I was like there's no way he's oh he did it. The, the just the climbability and everything. The horizon slash uncharted yep. look of it where it just it, you I love games like that. Like when Tomb Raider was reimagined, the way Tomb Raider was reimagined, like that gameplay, mm-hmm. especially the Charted series. I just finished Lost Legacy like mm-hmm. two weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Like it's just such a the games that you could play where you could watch the game and it's just as beautiful as playing it, like playing a movie. And that is why Linda loves those Star games. Wars. Like, <laughs> yeah. uh, Linda said it yesterday during the EA when she was watching the trailer. She said, "You know what? This kind of looks like Horizon." Yeah. And when you see the ATAT walking yeah. around and you're climbing up it, you're I, just climbing helped. a long neck. And how about this? ATST is always ATST. Oh, the ATAT is the two-legged. Yeah, it was the four-legged. The ATST was the two-legged one. That's when he climbed up. No, he climbed an ATAT. Really? It was a big vine and moss. The big one was yesterday. That was in the first game. The big one that looked like a dog today. Yeah, the, the big, the big it, one that looks like a dog. Like it, it's an AT-AT. The yes, one that, that's that in Empire that he spun yes, around. Correct. Yeah, the one that they made a, the, the, in the that Spider-Man. really old movie from Sp- for that Spider-Man <laughs> talked about in the Civil War, and he did it to Giant Man. Um, okay, so I'm so I got it right. Correct. You did. You right. Yes, AT-AT. Okay. Yes. Good. Yeah. There's... Trust me, I would have believed you. You could have just sold it, and it would have the comments would have been rough, but I would have believed you. There's just something about playing games like that where. Like, you you know, we all love video games, but a lot of the video games we play are first person, or for, like one player story driven games that are not like the majority of what's been coming out lately because everybody's been into the online multiplayer. Mm-hmm. But with stories, with narratives like that, that we love, it's so great to have something like this in the Star Wars which is also canon because Force would have taken your uh, characters in it yes. also. Like, just to have him there and be part of the story just means how much, like, Disney has given to this franchise. And, like, Disney has made this, like, 
what's going to be the next huge game. Yeah. Oh man. This is awesome. our. This is going to be our God of War this year, where it's just like yes. that's the one How where crazy it's just like is it? it's coming out this year. Yeah. Yeah. Also, oh. hashtag Forest Wakers on your windshield. Yeah. Hashtag Forest Wakers <laughs> on your windshield. Um, which I think was an awesome nod, by the way. Yeah, it's great. Right? Um, okay, so I have two. One of them I'm going to say literally one sentence. I want to keep my eye on Fantasy Star Online 2. Yep. Um, it's a free-to-play MMO coming to Xbox. Um, it looks rad. Um, the, the, the female characters were wearing clothes. So yep. that anytime you get an MMO, the, mm-hmm. Fantasy they were wearing clothes-ish. Were more, they not wearing clothes? Usual. Let's see. Hold on. Can we... Keep going. Keep going. So... Trailer. Um, I want to keep an eye on it. It was not as... I mean, it was not Xenoblade Chronicles. It was not Xenoblade Chronicles. Okay, so... And Xenoblade Chronicles, I mean, I it love that game. It wasn't Final Fantasy XV. It Mirage. was not... Sid, don't don't besmirch <laughs> Sydney's name. Um, okay, so... Uh, my wife besmirches her name enough for all of us. So, I, I just... That's the only sentence I'm going to say. I want to keep my eye on Fantasy Star Online 2. Now... The real game, and this is the game I lost my damn mind. This was my ultimate dopamine hype moment, um, is Minecraft Dungeons. Not just because I predicted that they were going to reveal it, but because I had... Okay, when they announced it, so I expect, good. when they announced it, I expected it to be Left for Dead. Yeah. With four players and doing Minecraft stuff. Excuse me, you didn't watch... That that, that Mike Connor like one character. Okay, stop yeah. for a second. I, I thought it was going to be. I thought when they announced it initially that it was going to be Left for Dead, in with Minecraft characters. The fact that it's Diablo, right? With Minecraft characters, he had a dodge roll. Like, fine. And you have pets. Did you see the guy like equipped like a golem that was like going to hang around with him, like. I mean, it's coming early 2020. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so I got half of my prediction right. Spring 2020. I cannot wait for Minecraft Dungeons. That is, um, I mean, almost the per like. They're never gonna make Minecraft two. I think this is a very good direction for the first real spinoff. Right. Um, they said that they were going to make more games similar to that. Sure. Sounds great. So, um, what else do we want to talk about? Anybody? Just a quick mention. Yes. Battletoads, three player, three player couch co op. Yeah. yeah. You, me, and him, we're gonna stream the whole thing. Yep. The whole game. And we're definitely gonna die on the speeder bike levels. All the time. All the time. So. What are speed bike levels? We'll show you later. You will learn. You will learn the, the pain. pain. And, and there was plenty for the grown ups there that were just jaw yep. dropping. And Keanu Reeves, is Keanu Reeves just shows up. Like, <laughs> yep. So, all right, everybody. Thank you very much for listening, everybody, to this episode of Engage, a family gaming podcast. This has been our podcast wrap up of the E3, uh, the Xbox E3 2019 media briefing. I got to get it right, okay, guys. Um, hope you have a great day. We will talk to you tomorrow when we recap. What's next? Nintendo? Next is no. Nintendo is Tuesday, dude. Don't skip Monday. The next one is Ubisoft. So and see y'all. Kind of funny. No. The next one that they will hear if they listen to them in order is Ubisoft. Everybody, have a great night, and don't forget to get your family game on. Bye. 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 Hello, everyone, and welcome to a very special episode of Engage, a family gaming podcast. My name is Steven Dutzman, and I'm your host, as always. This is the official video game and board game podcast for EngageFamilyGaming.com, and I am here recording some E3 podcasts with, to my right, John Roble, the fair and just commissioner. Hi, everybody. And across the table... John Tomlinson, the man behind the curtain. How's it going? And to his left, James, the video guy. Hey, guys. And we are here to talk about all things E3 today. First, I want to talk about Ubisoft. Um, they had their press conference. I fell asleep in the middle of it. 
Same. Um, <laughs> and that's not not even including the fact that they had... It was a, ubi soft as a pillow to put you to sleep. Oh. <laughs> oh that makes me cry. That was a critique, um, not a joke. That was there, a critique. That was a critique. Was a critique. <laughs> like, okay. But I was able to, like a, like a grapefruit, just squeeze it and get five little things for us to talk about. So Did just, it make you cry? Like a grapefruit when you squeeze it? Yeah, kind of. I, did, I didn't... Expect, yeah, I guess. Do grapefruits make people cry? Gets in your eyes. I mean, if it does, or if like, you hit someone in the face with it. <laughs> I mean, if you spray citrus in anyone's eye, you're going to cry. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so first, I'm just going to run down the only stuff that's relevant. They talked about a lot of updates to their mostly M-rated games and service games. And for those, I'm sure they're wonderful. Congratulations if you play For Honor, The Division, Ghost Recon, uh, or if you want to play Watch Dogs. Congrats. Yeah. Tom Clancy is doing very well. Tom me. Clancy. Yeah. All the money. Tom, well, he's... he's he... Oh, Tom Clancy, his estate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but they did have some stuff. First, uh, they announced the Adventure Time, which just ended last year. Yes, John? Uh, yeah, last summer, last and summer. we also got a Minecraft episode, which was pretty cool. Yeah. So, Adventure Time ended last year, and it's getting a crossover with Brawlhalla, which is a free-to-play... I mean, I don't want to call it a Smash clone, because it plays a little bit differently, but it's a multiplayer party fighting game that now you can play as the th- three of the main characters from Adventure Time. Um, Brawlhalla is free, so if you don't own a Switch... And you want to play a Smash Brothers game, Brawlhalla is reasonable, and now if you don't like Adventure Time, I guess that helps. Um, that's that's all we got, folks. This is this is how bad this conference was. Um, next, uh, guys, did you know Just Dance is 10 years old? Mm-hmm. It's crazy. <laughs> right? Like, um, it's 10 years old. Other fun fact, um, it's called Just Dance 2020, because that's... When the next one, you know, the next one's coming out representing the 20, year 2020. That's not the future anymore, guys. How weird is that? Like, it's actually, like, occurring. It used to be, like, so far in the future, it was, like, you know, Johnny Mnemonic. Yeah, sci-fi movies were set in 2020. And now it's, like, now. It's yeah. not hindsight anymore. Yep. Oh. Ooh. Zing. <laughs> well, no, it will be hindsight. I bet you. In two right years. now, it's foresight. Yeah. It'll be 2020. <laughs> Yikes. That joke was terrible because it didn't work. <laughs> I can't. I, I, love I it. definitely can't wait until yeah. 2021 so we can say hindsight is 2020. That's yeah, gonna be yeah, amazing. exactly. Um, so, uh, a other weird fact about Just Dance: it's being released for the Wii. Yeah, but not the Wii U. That's just like a little footnote in history where it's like the Wii. There's so many of them, and they obviously sell somewhere. Well, the thing is that the it's released for the Wii because it can still be played on the Wii U. So, it's oh, that's technically a good point. yeah. That's a good point. I didn't even think of that. Yeah. So I should that, go get that's that why I thought the box yeah. To the basement, and I mean, are that. you gonna play Just Dance anyway? No. Like I kind of. I mean, I could jailbreak it for you. I mean, here's the thing. We don't talk about that on here. Yeah. Um, I kind of want a copy of Just Dance 2020 for the Wii. It, here's what I think it is. It feels like it's one of those games that if you can get it inexpensively and leave it in the plastic, like, that's going to be something for collectors. I'm not saying, like, bag it and board it like your loved comic books. Well, I'm like, that's something that's going to be kind of rare. See, my I'm counterpoint gonna... is that that's it's just going to every senior home. Sure. Because or... that's where all the Wii's are. Exactly, which means eventually it'll just be of no value <laughs> um, and to them because they're going to open it, but everybody that's got a sealed copy... I don't know. I just think that's got a chance. So that's Just Dance. If you like Just Dance, then Congrats. it's more Just Dance. Yeah. If you don't like Just Dance, well, then you tuned out. So um, next, I think these are probably the three bigger topics. Um, Ubisoft announced their uh, subscription service. Who wants to share the details? So uh, fourteen ninety nine uh, gets you. Um, PC access Mm -hmm. along with Google Stadia access when Google Stadia launches later this year. And uh, that was the one with all the DLC, right? Yeah, so all the deluxe versions of the games. So all the deluxe versions 
of all the games. So, like, if you play stuff like Assassin's Creed and Watch Dogs and all those kinds of games where it's, like, $80, $90 with that season pass and all, all the bells and whistles, that means that you're paying... 50, if you're only playing on PC or you... Uh, choose to invest in Google Stadia, which, you know, the jury's still out on that, is it's a pretty decent deal if that's where you want to go. But, you know, you're, you're tied down to uh, PC only or Stadia, so. Yeah, I mean. And, and we've, we, we talked about that yesterday on one of the... Uh, the commutes. Like, one of the uh, commutes, yeah. One of the episodes of the EFG Daily Commute, which you can yeah. find at engagefamilyhammy.com slash commute. Yep. Um, yeah, I mean, this is, it's it's interesting. Yeah. I mean, who knows? I'm not going to subscribe to it, um, at least not until it comes to console, and then I'll think about it. But it, I'm certainly not going to subscribe to it for an entire year. It might be when a game comes out that I want, rather than paying for it, I might buy it, buy a two-month subscription to Uplay Plus, and play it for a couple months and then cancel it. That type of thing. Um, so that's you play plus. Next is Roller Champion. John, you have some. This made you feel a certain kind of way, mainly because we were calling it the wrong thing. Well, and they you were called correcting it the wrong me thing. all the time. They called it the wrong. It's Rollerball. That's all it is. Yeah. They just they made it a video game again. It might have been a video game at some point or another. Um, but I was waiting for James Town to appear in some sort of cameo yeah. in the game. Yeah. <laughs> He'll be a skin. You know what it felt? This is the old game, James Con or young James Con, both the seventies. Yeah, both. That'd be amazing. Um, it gave me. This is gonna sound crazy, but it kind of gave me Rocket League vibes, like from what it's trying to do, which is yeah, kind of make a game out of something that's not typically. Now, for the record, I'm okay with it. I just was like, it's it's rollerball. Just yeah. Too many people. Why the license to the name? <laughs> Too many people were calling it roller derby. Yeah, and I, I, I was getting, like, uh, Windjammer vibes and well, stuff like that. Of, where I mean, you like, definitely can't call it Windjammer. Windjammer is basically like a, a cross between, like, a fighting game and Pong. Yeah. This was... They had sort of roller derby outfits. Yeah, exactly. So that's yeah, that's I where guess. that came from. I mean, it's, but it's I mean, like, avoid that aesthetic. Well, that, that's what I'm saying. Like, the game is more of an amped up, different universe type game. Rather than, you know, we're not seeing that on network TV, you know. Fair, fair. <laughs> Um, okay, so lastly, and I think this is probably the biggest and most important one, is Gods and Monsters. From uh, So this is from the developers behind Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Yeah. So, um, James, you did a little bit of research on this one. Tell me, what what, what do you think? So it, it initially we weren't super, I wasn't super hyped for it in that first blush. I thought this was going to be a cute little Clash of Clans type game. But then when I saw the camera pan over wide vistas and started reading up on it, it, it sounds a lot more like Zelda Light. More exploration, more combat, more traditional action-adventure type play. Um, if that's the case, and it's the guys who brought me Assassin's Creed Odyssey, then I'm there for it. Yeah, from that team, like you're just going to get content, content, content. Like Of all the Assassin's Creed, like... Odyssey, that team just went full on with content to the point where there's a whole nother game just in the season pass. Right. And, like and start to finish, there's a whole nother game. And this features uh, Greek mythology, which yeah. is which is a really cool thing. It's a cool thing we don't see enough of. Um, so I'm down. Yeah. And much more family friendly. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's coming out. And it's coming out soon. Yeah. February 25th. Assuming it doesn't get delayed. I know you guys give me a lot of crap because I say, assuming it doesn't get delayed. But, games get delayed. It's part of the deal. So that's Ubisoft. We just did it in, what, 10 minutes? Tops. Yeah. Um, and You're welcome. There, there really wasn't a lot. Yeah, we saved you some time. Yeah. There really wasn't a lot to talk about. It's a little disappointing, but what are you going to do? Um, so with that, I do hope you enjoyed our Ubisoft episode of Engage, a family gaming podcast. We will be back next time to talk about Square Enix. Uh, but until then, don't forget to get your family game on. We'll see you soon. Bye, everybody. See you. Bye. Later. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Engage, a family gaming podcast. My name is Stephen Dutzman, and I am your host, as always. It's E3 week, and so this time, it's time to talk about Square Enix. 
I am joined today by John Robel, the fair and just commissioner. Hello. And John Tomlinson, the man behind the curtain. How's it going? And James Pisano, the video guy. Hey, guys. And now we're going to talk about Square Enix. Last time, we had a bummer of a podcast because we were talking about Ubisoft. A, an E3 press conference that literally put me to sleep, which that says some things. Um, but Square Enix was way more exciting. Lots of good stuff. Um, so let's just dive right into it. We don't have time. Um, what are we going to talk about first? We can talk about Final Fantasy VII Remake first, or we can talk about Avengers first. Let's switch it up. Let's go Avengers first. Fine. Let's talk about Marvel's Avengers. So, this game is by Crystal Dynamics, being published by Square Enix. Crystal Dynamics is a company that did the uh, recent Tomb Raider reboot, um, and so they're making a multiplayer action game, third-player action game, where you play as Avengers, starting with the first five, um, which would be Captain America, Iron Man, Thor, Black Widow, and the Hulk. And then eventually expanding to include probably everyone because, as I said, uh, to all sorts of folks, not to you necessarily, John, but I don't know why I'm pointing at you. Um, because I'm sitting here. Everyone is an Avenger at some point. Wolverine was an Avenger. So um, what do we think of the you know, the, the trailer they gave us? They gave a little tiny bit of gameplay. They gave us more gameplay than they did about FIFA 20. They did. That. Lots so, more. Um, so... John or James, one of you guys, jump in. Tell me your thoughts. So initially, um, you know, I was a little bummed by the sort of what I'll call the off-brand Avengers. But when I heard them talking, I heard them acting and saw the job they were doing, I think we have to give them a chance because the story is new. This is new canon in Marvel's universe. Um, the game style, single, pl single player or multiplayer, that got me from the get-go. No pay to win. No loot boxes. It sounds like they know what we want. So I can forgive them not paying Boku bucks for actor likenesses and giving us a great Avengers game. Could be great. Um, I'm, I'm still in James' first thought where it's just, I, I love Troy Baker. I love no Nolan North. Like, they're two of my favorite guys. As John said yesterday, I, can't, I love Uncharted 4. And it's the two... Two of the same guys that play the brothers are playing the two main characters, you know, the Hulk and Iron Man. So, like, having those two together, and it's just like, I love them, but it, it it's off-putting because we also just spent the last 15 years right. with the MCU Avengers. And even if they just got one, I'd be a little <laughs> bit happier, but, like... Well I mean, if I can counterpoint you, like we spent 15 years with the MCU, mm -hmm. but all five of these guys are at least Silver Age superheroes. Yeah. So like the rest right. of the world has had Captain America since the like the early 60s, late 50s. Yep. So this is so I love Chris Chris Evans too. I stand that guy. I'm so happy. Robert Downey Jr. is literally Iron Man to me. But we have to move on eventually. Mm -hmm. Um. And I think this is a good opportunity to do so. My only critique is I, I feel like they would have been better served going, making them more different. And this is something that James said uh, to me while we were randomly talking about it earlier on today, but I think it makes sense. I wish they had gone a little bit more different. For example, let's use Thor, right? Mm -hmm. um, Thor has had a number of designs, but... They, they could have used Thunderstrike. I mean, there's another Thor character that's not actually Thor, but like they could have used his design. He yeah. looks different. He, um, you know, it's not just a different interpretation. Mm -hmm. These guys feel like alternate reality versions of the same characters, as opposed to just a different design. Or do something real crazy, like why don't you give Thor a mohawk? Like why don't you make Thor look like a literal Viking? Like, yeah. why, like just yeah. totally throw the designs out the door. Yeah. Like, Black Widow just look, looks, she looks like Scarlett Johansson's stunt double. Yeah, exactly. Um, and it, that that's my major problem with it. Like, seeing it that close rather than seeing it totally different, that's what kind of off puts me. I get it. What you got, John? So, 
in honor of the Frozen 2 trailer that just dropped today, just let it go. Oh, oh it's, uh, no. By the way, that song's not in Frozen 2. I know what you're telling me. <laughs> let it go, John. I, think, I, mean, we're I don't know that. What I we're let go all the time. Oh. But, listen. I like, mean, I, that's true. <laughs> I can go eat an Eggo. Oh, yeah. I mean, man. It's fine. I mean, well, he, I'm go, I'm crank, out the window. we're cranking the dad jokes up to 11, all right? <laughs> all right. So, all right, I'm going to step in the middle here. That was a stranger's thing. Oh, okay. I, I'm sure. I'm going to step in the middle here and say, okay, so we can have an issue with it. I think the, the internet itself is divided. We'll see what happens here. soon. Like, you know, my critiques aside, there's st- we're, we still have how long until the game comes out? Well, so there may be more compelling stuff, and the story may grab me in a different way. But I'm also seeing stuff where I'm jaded because when I played, uh, when back, Batman Arkham Knight came out, they were saying, it's a totally different bad guy. You've never seen this bad guy before. And it was totally something uh, straight from the comics. It was just the longest like reveal. Like um, You saw the trailer like... I know who that guy is. I know why that... I know the exact storyline they're doing. And it was basically like the Lost, where it was just like, yeah, we're not... You know, that's not the story. That's not the story. And then you saw the finale, and it's like, that's the exact story. Like, it was a totally wa- wasted... I get what you're saying. And I'm sh- different at story. Day, at the end of the day, all the stories are basically the same. Like, no, like a it's whole, true. Like, so... I just want to punch things as the Hulk or fly as Thor or as Iron Man. I think the problem with with Iron Man is you can't make him look different because he has always been an Italian dude with a goatee. Yeah. And we can't, there's not much you can do about the voice acting either because Troy Baker's in everything. Yeah. The, the dude's been bad. No, those are the guys that I would... You like, if I them. was building a game, those were the first... And I had... The budget, those are the first two people yeah. I call. So, like, those are the voices. So, the way that the other piece to this game, I mean, it's going to be a both single and multiplayer action game. The single player game, you're going to be controlling the different, the five different Avengers, going through a plot line. Um, and, and then there's a, a just like you know, Tomb Raider, only you have five playable Avengers. We don't know if you're going to be playing them at different levels that are kind of bespoke for their skills. I think that's probably the case because. Yeah. Like, you can't make a level for Black Widow that would be challenging for her yeah. and then let you play through it as Thor yeah. without putting, like, weird fail states where it's like, oh, no, you have to sneak in. Like, yeah. It's just... You know, so, I'm sure that they're going to have bespoke levels for each character, but the the real bonus to this is that this is going to be a living game as service where they're going to be regularly adding new missions, new areas, new game modes, and also... New heroes, um, because one of the things about the Avengers is everybody's an Avenger. Um, yeah. and they already and revealed they that the first, the first guy's going to be yeah. Ant Man. Yep. Um, and so, and even better, all the DLC. Now, when they said this, James stood up practically because he was very excited. All the DLC is going to be free. It means they put out a new character. You can hop right back into the game. I am sure that there will be cosmetic microtransactions. Which um, is fine. But there will be, the DLC is free, there are no loot boxes, and there are no pay to win. You're not buying damage boosts and things like that. That sounds great to me. Um, the the fact that they're adding new superheroes, it means we're going to see Spider-Man, and we're going to see Ant-Man, and we're going to see... Giant Man. Giant Man. Well, I mean, yeah, who knows what we're going to see. Yeah. I would think, just because they do have a bit of an imbalance between the male and the female characters, I'm guessing that after Ant-Man, the next couple are all going to be ladies, like Captain Marvel. Well, Star then Wars. you have, well, after the Ant-Man, you just bring in the Wasp. And then you could... Maybe, maybe. You're, maybe they're both in this. Then you have Valkyrie. We don't Valkyrie, know how Valkyrie, Gamora, add. the Ga- Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, I'm not saying that. there are not a billion female characters. Oh, yeah. yeah, I just feel like they have to pick them. Um, mm-hmm. But what's crazy is we don't know if they're going to come in groups. You know, they might add like two or three at a time. We don't know. Um, but the fact that they're free means this is one of those games that every time they drop a new hero, it's like the game's going to get crowded again. Um, and I can't wait for that. Yeah. So, next. So, Marvel Avengers. I think, are we all generally in favor or at least someone? Oh, none yeah. of us are anti 
we're all at the very least neutral. I'm looking forward to May 15th. Yeah, May 15th, I'm buying the crap out of this game and I'm going to play it. Well, since I have a PS4, I may be able to get in the beta or oh, Yep. Me too. Hmm. Um, you can be Captain America and I'll be... All right. Sounds good. Done. Um, so, you know who's surprisingly a little cold on it? It's Evan. Evan is pretty cold on it. For some of the same reasons that you guys are. The difference is, he's 13... So these characters had been the MCU characters for him since yeah. before he was born. Whereas we are old, so we've we've dealt with a number of iterations. So, okay. Um, next. Let's talk about some of the other just smaller things. They announced a bunch of Final Fantasy games. Um, the biggest one, Final Fantasy VIII, is getting a remaster. That caught me off guard. I was like, where'd they find that, that code? That caught everyone off guard because... We thought that the source code was lost. Yeah, which actually happens a lot in yeah. Japan. Where they're like, oh, the game's finalized, let's just delete everything. And their archival process just wasn't well, ready. Well, it's it's the like same, it was just yeah, it's the same story of why there's a lot of missing Doctor Who episodes. It's like, hard drive space is a thing. Yeah. And, you know, things get deleted, things get misplaced, hard drives fail. Yeah. And you could lose it forever. So, my understanding is since they lost it, either they found it somewhere, which I guess is possible, right? Like, they could have just had a team digging through old computers, or they reverse engineered it, or in the process of re- reverse engineering it. Um, they also confirmed Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles remaster coming to the Switch. Cannot wait for that. Mm-hmm. Um, they talked a little bit more about Dragon Quest Eleven Echoes of Elusive Age Definitive Edition S. How about that for a name, John? Is the longest name that's ever been named ever. I don't know if it's the longest name ever. James, James I, and John, can either of you guys remember a name of a video game that's longer? You guys know there's some weeby games out there. that. Like, I felt like they just kept adding words. They're like, you know what? We need some Just more all the Dragon Ball, like the foreign Dragon, the J- Japanese Dragon Ball games, like... Are yeah, ridiculous. Maybe, maybe the Kenju so, Racing games. There is a game in Japan in 2015 that is roughly translated to "Summer Colored High School Adolescent Record: A Summer at School on an Island Where I Contemplate How the First Day After I Transferred, I Ran Into a Childhood Friend and Was Forced to Join the Journalism Club, Where While My Dogs as a Paparazzi Kid with Great Scoops Made Me Rather Popular Among the Girls, But Strangely My Camera Is Full of Something Can't Say That and Where My Candid Romance Is Going." They may, they might win. <laughs> That's a long title. That's a long title. But but you know what? At least it tells you what it is. Is that because it's all written in kanji? It is all in in, in kanji. Yes, kanji, some hiragana, some katakana. So some of those are one symbol that means a phrase is what's happening there. Yes. Okay. So, but still, um, I shouldn't need to put an addendum page on the front of the box so I know what the title is. Fair. Fair. Trust me, that game that he was just talking about, not... I'm not talking about that Oh, you're talking about Dragon Quest XI, Echoes of Evolution's Age, Definitive Edition, S? (laughs) Is it Sport, so it goes faster? No, I'm thinking it means Switch. Hyper EX. Hyper EX Turbo (laughs) Championship Edition. Um, If you add Hyper EX Turbo Championship Edition to any video game... Somebody's buying it. It gets better. Like... Gone Home, EX Turbo Championship <laughs> Edition. Animal Crossing. Animal Crossing, EX Hyper Combo Turbo Championship Edition. See, it just it, the, the joke writes itself. Um, so I do want to talk about a game that's coming to Switch PS4. Uh, it's called Onimake. It's from Tokyo RPG Factory. It's a stylish action RPG. Uh, basically, you play like a chibi character running around these various environments, and you equip spirits. And the spirits, or Oni, not those kind of Oni, not the bad ones, these are the good ones, that um, you equip and they give you weapons, and they're your weapons, um, and they also give you kind of superpowers. So there's like a spear, you fight, and the spear guy follows you around, there's one that shoots guns, it's, it looks rad, it's coming out this August. Um, and so we, and I will be very likely picking it up on the Switch, because it's looks like a Switch, Switch, Switch video game. You know what I mean? Some things just look like a Switch-ass video game. It's this one. Um, but let's talk about the real deal. Like, 
everything. I mean, Avengers was a big deal, right? But like, nothing had people hyped. Like Final Fantasy VII. James, you proved your love for Final Fantasy VII yesterday. I did. I, I pledged my love with... You pledged it. With, oh, you definitely with pledged cash. it. With cash! With... If pre-ordering video games represents your support for a video game, James supports them as much as you possibly can at this very moment. I bought the first class edition. Which is a, which is a crazy edition that includes... A steel box and an art book and some assets in the game, I'm sure. Yeah. And then a giant cloud on a motorcycle statue. A Play Arts Kai cloud on a motorcycle statue. Um, and they kill you on the shipping, too. And I, that's, I had to be all in it. What were you going to do? Because you wanted it on March 3rd. So I wanted it on delayed. release day. That's right. Um, so, and if you want yours, you have to order it by, I believe, February 8th, or you will not get it on release day. Yeah, you got to go. John, you never played Final Fantasy VII. I didn't. Did that game interest you at all? I'm buying it. Alright. So what about... Well, you're not buying it. Your wife told you to buy it. <laughs> that would still mean I'm I know. It. <laughs> but you were given permission. I was, yeah. I was told absolutely to go yeah. buy it because I want to watch it. Yeah. I mean, so what about it really grabbed you, though? Oh, uh, the combat system. Combat system? Yeah. So, I mean, what's crazy is the original Final Fantasy VII, back when most of us played it, it was just a turn-based role-playing game. Like just, right. I'm going to stand there. <laughs> I hit a button. I'm going to run over. This was notably one of the first times in a Final Fantasy game where you actually, like, actually hit the enemy as opposed to, like, standing forward and, like... I mean, Final Fantasy VI did it, too. But, like, this was, this was a big deal. So you came up and, like, swung your weapons in, like, dynamic and interesting ways as opposed to stepping forward and doing a... You know, swing your hand, like, over your head. Um, the combat system looks rad. I saw some people complaining about it online. Because it's different. And I think this is the, those are the people that did, just don't want the remake. Those are the ultra purists. Yeah. They're like, you know, why, why should you have to use an ATB bar to be able to freeze time? Because the idea is, you use melee attacks, they build up a meter... And when the meter fills up, you can basically freeze time and you and burn that meter to um, do special moves it's, and use items and cast spells. It sounds awesome. It's, yes, as near as I can liken it to, for what I am familiar with, and basically you run into a bat system. So yeah, it falls right. up. yeah, pretty much. That fell it like fills it. up and boom. Okay, you can go do that now. You do your special moves. Well, they they, they had the special move. The special moves that I saw were the kind of the same system in. Final Fantasy 15. Right there, there is a system where you could trade places with all the characters, mm -hmm. and you could use their special moves that were built up mm -hmm. at mm -hmm. any time. Something nice about this system too is, you know, all, almost all JRPGs get kind of grindy at points, yeah. and true turn-based RPG grinding can get boring. No matter how much you love the game, yeah. I've fallen asleep in my chair before. Yep. Yeah. This keeps you engaged. This keeps you actively strategizing, actively moving around, fighting enemies, um, thinking about how, what what moves you want to build up for, which character you're going to switch to. It just mm -hmm. it makes it much more engaging. Yeah, I am interested to see how complex fights with enemies at different levels, when you have multiple assets at your disposal, how that will work, mm -hmm. and how the AI interacts with you, because you can have it. They go about and do their things based on direction, but how smooth is it? So yeah, yeah. I've never been a fan of, of the of like the setting macros for your party thing. It's always been either too convoluted or not detailed enough. I'm hoping and they certainly took their time making this game. Maybe they nailed it. I hope yeah. they did. Right. Exactly. Yeah, I agree. I, I mean, I feel I I'm, I'm full it. on hype for it. Like this. My big question, because I'm going to buy it. Is what am I actually getting? We had this conversation this morning. Well, I don't the, think the internet knows what, yet. That's, that's the well, thing. That's Once a problem. all this is digested, we listen to what they said and are really not clear what's being shipped in that first well, iteration. Here's the good news. Well, it's not only that, it's what, how many times am I paying? Correct. <laughs> it's it not like what's shipping because what ships doesn't matter because we live in a different age of games now. I, yeah, they I can understand. Updates. So, the good news is this. 
Everybody listening, if you are curious for that answer, uh, go to EngageFamilyGaming.com um, and check it out because there are plenty of people at E3 meeting with Square Enix about this game and yeah. everyone is going to ask this question yep. because it was not clear. Yeah. Um, no one really knows. Um, and I also sent a message to my PR contact at Square Enix. They haven't responded to me yet, but they've had a bit of a busy day. I'll give them a break. You can't imagine why. I mean, I mean, there was more square drops today too. So. Yeah, no, they're very busy. Yeah. Um. So we will find out more. And I actually days. have some, maybe some updates. The first installment will feature two Blu-ray discs worth of content, but it will only contain the Midgard portion of events. That seems to be a pretty definitive answer. That part one will be two Blu-ray discs. Which is what, bananas. What is, what is happening? I mean, I that's mean, crazy. Because Okay, so let's assume that that's the case. Because that sounds pretty definitive. So let's assume that Midgar... Like, Midgar is like six hours of Final Fantasy VII. Like, yeah. it's... Originally. The original game. So it's fast, right? Yeah. Man, they're adding a lot of stuff. Because The Witcher wasn't two Blu-rays. No, it was not. The Witcher wasn't two Blu-rays. What are they doing? Do Don't they not know, know how to? Com- should they talk to Nintendo to, and learn how to compress files? Going into the city, files? that's what's going on. Yeah, I mean, we, we may be dealing with a, a more alive city and not just you know pre-rendered backgrounds in the PS One days. Maybe now, yeah. I can go to Tifa's apartment. You yeah. know? Maybe there's a whole background where he trains with the crew beforehand. Because we, but the the opening of the game is them thrown into a mission. That's insane. Can I speculate wildly for a minute? You may have one minute to speculate yep. wildly. What if they Clock integrate up. Crisis Core into this game? <sighs> and we get more context for Cloud Story. Yeah. A lot and of Crisis Core more stuff. A lot of Crisis Core was in Midgar, right? If yeah. I remember correctly. I mean, that makes sense, I guess. That's crazy. I'm down. The first game is two Blu-rays. We th- this is got, I think this is one of the first games to use two Blu-rays. Square Enix did a good job. Yep. They did. They did a great job. So, uh, everybody, thank you very much for listening to our Square Enix special of the Engaged Family Gaming Podcast. I hope you guys have a great day. We will be back next time talking a little bit of Nintendo. Who am I kidding? We're probably talking a lot about Nintendo. We'll see you guys soon. Until then, don't forget to get your family game on. Bye now. Bye. Bye. Later. Hello everyone, welcome to the Nintendo Daily Recap Show. My name is Steven Dutzman, I'm the founder of EngagedFamilyGaming.com and I'm joined on my left with, uh, with, by, my good friend Jonathan Tomlinson, the man behind the curtain. How are you, sir? Excellent. And I'm also joined on my right by James Pisano, the video guy. Hey guys. And so, uh, I hope some of you are joining us after a rather uh, contentious I think is the appropriate term. Uh, prediction results show. Uh, the the results were that no one gets the belt right now because we have a two way tie between myself and the princesses of power. We still have no sound. It's it's thirty seconds behind. I just I just asked the question still and they said nope. But so you made it back to over here. Uh, in can you guys you guys confirm that you still can't hear us? If you can't hear us, tell us. Yeah. Okay, but look, I was just—I asked here, still no sound, and Jessica and Perry both responded right away. But look, that I, I've had. He this. hasn't even left the desk yet. You see, that's when I went. Okay. Just say, hold on, it'll catch up. There it is. Okay. okay. So. Thanks, Perry. The, uh, so it was a tie, a two-way tie between myself and uh, the Princesses of Power. The two of them, uh, it has been decided that we're going to settle it in Smash. However, uh, one of the Princesses of Power, upon being notified of that, uh, protested and said uh, that they may want to choose another game. We'll decide the game at a later date, uh, a mutually agreeable one. They may want to fight me in Smash because I'm terrible at it, but we'll figure it out from there. Um, But... All jokes aside, it's all in good fun. 
Um, thank you to our fair and just commissioner for helping uh, moderate a fair competition. Um, but back to the real work. Nintendo. They had their press conference today. It was the only... Well, it wasn't a press conference. They had their Nintendo Direct today. It was the only real press type event today of any real consequence. And I can say comfortably, and I don't want to hear if you guys agree with me, and I'd love to hear the chat too, um, I think Nintendo killed it. Absolutely. They, killed without it. question, Absolutely. they won E3. Full stop. So, um, what we're going to do, we're just going to run down some of the bigger announcements, and uh, we'll share some of our thoughts. And I'd love to hear thoughts from folks in the comments. So I know we have uh, our two guys here watching, and also we have our producer, the fair and just commissioner, watching the chat. So if you have a thought, an opinion, etc., shout it out. So, first, let's talk about the biggest news of the day, which I believe is the Zelda news. There were three pieces yeah. of Zelda news that I think we really need to get into. Um, I'll get the quick ones out of the way. First, uh, the uh, Cadence of Hyrule, uh, the Crypt of the Necrodancer, is going to be $25, and it's coming out on Friday. Yep. That is uh, June 13th. Uh, like I said, it's going to be about $25. It's an indie game It's where you have to kind of move in a grid to a rhythm to defeat enemies, and you can play as either Link or Zelda. Right. Um, looks pretty or rad. Cadence. Or as Cadence, Cadence. Yeah. who is the kind of the, the main character in the primary game. Um, I think this is awesome. It looks like cool. it was originally pitched as just Cadence in Hyrule, and now, it, today, it was announced that Link and Zelda were going to be in it. No, they said Link was in it before. Was it? Yeah. I don't remember that part. They definitely were. Okay. Um, but now we have confirmation. All three of them can play it. Um, Albert, chill out. We'll get there in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, the... Um, just trust me, we're going to freak out too. The second piece of news, they gave us more information about uh, Link's Awakening, which is crazy, really. Yeah, um, first... Comes out September 23rd, you said? 20th, I think. Uh, September 20th. Comes out this September. It's going to be a $60 release, and it is, go it is going to include a, uh, a, like a dungeon builder. Yeah. Where but, as, but go ahead. A dungeon builder that you can then play the dungeons yourself. Like, you can build yeah. them, play through them, get rewards, all kinds of good yeah. stuff. Yeah. Like, in essence, as you play through dungeons and clear certain rooms, you will more, more or less capture them. And then you can use them to build other puzzles. Um, I think this is awesome. I'm sure that we're going to be doing, making some videos with the kids making dungeons oh, yeah. oh, and trying yeah. to beat me or vice versa. Do we know if they can be shared between players yet? They didn't say. Okay. I'm presuming yes, but I don't know. That would be yeah. awesome. They but you can never technology. really assume that, that, I mean, they have the technology to share levels with other people because Mario <laughs> Maker, but you never know. Um, I think this is awesome. It also has an amiibo, which is up for pre-order now. So you can go and, if you are interested, um, you can go and uh, pre-order your Link's Awakening Amiibo. And, uh, you know, it's a normal price. And man, is it cute. I actually shared a picture of it on the EFG Facebook page. So adorable. Like, yeah, super yeah. cool. Super cool. So those are, the th those are two of the pieces of Zelda news. Let's talk about the absolute biggest one, which is they announced that they are, in de they are developing a sequel to Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Yes. Um, now we know it's in development. In development is. Hi Rachel. I mean, <laughs> hi Rachel. Um, so, so the we know it's in development. It was just announced as in development, which means it's not coming out right away. Right. But um, the fact that Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild, which is without question the best video game Nintendo has ever made, in my opinion, um, the sequel to that is. Just more of that is just going to be great. Now, Nintendo has done this before. Uh, they have, if you remember Ocarina of Time, mm -hmm. um, Ocarina of Time came out in 1998. Yep. And less than two years later, Majora's Mask came out. Majora's Mask came out using the same engine, a lot of the same assets, and was a very different and very weird take on very Ocarina of Time which was a very classic high fantasy time travel story, Majora's Mask, wacky as all get out. So the fact that we have Breath of the Wild, which is a very traditional, you know, kind of high fantasy story, um, we're gonna get a wacky take on that. Um, yeah, we are. And uh, I've watched some of the 
you know, videos and some of the analyses about this minute and a half long teaser trailer, people are already t- taking every frame of this thing apart oh. because of course they are. Um, well, uh, the co-host of your uh, board game show, Rob, uploaded a video of the whole trailer played flat backwards. Yeah, definitely encourage everybody head on over to Apon's Perspective's YouTube channel. At the very least, give Rob some clicks. Yeah. Um, he actually took the trailer and reversed it so you can watch it backwards, including the sound. Um, it's a little disconcerting in a few places, yeah. but you can hear some noise that sounds very similar to some of the sound effects in Twilight Princess. Yes. Um, and another thing that is somewhat similar, if you look at the the mummy thing at the end of the trailer, or the beginning of Rob's version of the trailer, um, it has the same diadem as uh, Ganondorf in... Twilight Princess. Princess. Yep. So there are definitely some connections to that. Obviously, we know all those games are connected. This is bananas. Super right? bananas, yes. Um, and they turned around Majora's Mask in two years. Now, I'm not saying that they're going to be able to do the same thing, because obviously developing for modern consoles, more expensive and harder than developing for the Nintendo 64. But this is awesome. Absolutely. Uh, I'm so hyped. Hashtag dopamine, big time. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Hashtag, Hashtag dopamine. dopamine. So, um, I would love to hear people's thoughts or predictions in the comments um, as we kind of move on, uh, because, you know, obviously there's a lot of news uh, oh. presented. So, um, after we do the three Zelda announcements, which are great, I mean, we could theorize about, um, we could theorize about Zelda Breath of the Wild 2 for hours. Yeah, all um, But let's move on. Um, the next big chunk of news, believe it or not, deepest cut ever, was all about Secret of Mana and the various games in that franchise. Um, two announcements. One, uh, the Secret of Mana collection uh, is coming to the Switch today. It's, out. it's, it's $40. Out. It includes Final Fantasy Adventure, which is essentially Secret of Mana, the prequel. Secret of Mana. And then um, it also has uh, Second Dead Setsu 3, which is... Tri- essentially Trials of Mana. Yeah, it's Trials um, of Mana. And that collection is out right now. It's $40. And Trials of Mana is actually being released as a a new game. They redid it in entirely in 3D, um, much like the Secret of Mana game that came out for PS4 yes. last year. Um, and that's coming out, I believe they said, in 2020. So it's in development now. Um, and the, if you're a Secret of Mana fan, or if you like multiplayer action role-playing games, which there aren't that many, it's coming. Yep. So, um, so that's the Zelda notes as far as those announcements. Secret of Mana news. Um, so let's talk about Animal Crossing. We got, I mean, we can't avoid the news anymore. Nope. Um, Animal Crossing was delayed until March of next year. That was heartbreaking. It was heartbreaking, but they really didn't need to release it this year. I know they said no. it was coming in 2019, yeah. um, but you know it's you know, they, they didn't need it, and I think it needs more time. So yeah, Evan behind us is freaking out about Animal Crossing. Um, so it is called M- Animal Crossing New Horizons. It is coming in March of next year. Yes. And what we know is that it takes place on a tropical island. Well, I mean, tropical island might not be the right word, but it was definitely an island. Um, so the <laughs> um, one of the newest additions, um, number one, uh, most of the UI is driven by a smartphone app made by Nook Incorporated. That man is everywhere, and um, you also have a crafting system, which is the. Uh, You'll 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 knock on trees, and instead of just getting fruit, maybe you'll get sticks or leaves, things like that, that you can then combine to make things like fires or stumps to sit on, etc. Um, I think adding crafting to Animal Crossing, as opposed to just ways to make money, right? Um, that opens up a lot of design space for different convoluted things you're going to need to do to make all the cool stuff in the yes. game. Um, this is going to be great. It stinks that we don't get it this year. I, I was really hoping that it was going to be a holiday title. So, but two things. Um, apparently, based on Jenna's comments, your daughter's face may have melted. 
When yeah, she Megan saw is very upset. She actually posted in the community, which, by the way, you can get there by going to engagefamilygaming.com slash community. Um, and this is a direct quote from my daughter. She said, a whole almost year, come on, man. Why daddy post it if it's not coming out until after your birthday? Seriously, I need it now. Animal Crossing needs to come out now. Oh, thank you. Um, Tweet that to Rachel, Rachel has a suggestion. Yep. They stop working on Sword Shield, and boom, there's more time for Animal Crossing. Um, Absolutely. So that would be fine with two problems. One, uh, boom. And Pokemon is being done by Game Freak. And I would, I would like to say that an Animal Crossing game made by Game Freak would be a very different video <laughs> game. Yes. Um, I'm not saying that I'm, I'm still not, all in. I'm, I mean, still I'm all in. All, in. I, I, all my money. So, like, I, no, because I want the Pokemans. They just announced a Corgi Pokemon. They just made a Pokemon game last year. Yeah. And yeah. Go play New Leaf. You'll be fine. Okay. No, I've been playing New Leaf forever. <laughs> okay. I'm not fighting you. Listen. I may not be the champ right now. But I'm closer than you are. So back off. All right. So, For first so that's time the, in over two years. Listen, <laughs> you know what? Well, it, it, it's fine. You'll have another opportunity soon enough. Uh, maybe we'll do we'll do predictions for the game awards. Okay. Um, okay. So, um, so that's Animal Crossing. I, I'm bummed, but lots of details came out today. Uh, obviously, there's plenty of time for them to do an all Animal Crossing focused Nintendo Direct. Sure. I'm really looking forward to this. It looks exactly like I wanted it to. Um, Animal Crossing is not meant to be like a graphical powerhouse. It's meant to just look charming and peaceful and fun. And that's exactly what it looks like. You know what, what it looks like? It looks like Link from Animal Crossing, or Link from Link's Awakening, would fit perfectly yeah. right on that island. Um, aesthetic. Would, that would be awesome if you could yeah. just have him kind of hanging oh, yeah. out or that kind of costume. So... Fear not. They didn't delay it indefinitely. No. They delayed it outside of 2019 to March. And they were very apologetic. Well, they're always apologetic. That's Nintendo's jam. Yeah. Please be excited. So, um, so that was Animal Crossing. Um, next, let's talk about Luigi's Mansion 3, which I know... Oh, we got something from the audience? Uh, we're glitching a bit, that's all. Yeah. Oh, we're glitching? Um, that's got to be the connection. So, Luigi's Mansion 3... I know my wife is very excited, as Luigi's Mansion, quietly, is one of her favorite games. So, the uh, let's just go through some of the stuff that they announced. So, um, first off, it looks beautiful. It looks amazing. I mean, James, you, let, why don't, I've been doing a lot of talking, James. Um, you, this was your first kind of experience with Luigi's Mansion. Yes. So, as from a fresh set of eyes, Tell us what's up. I was excited about Luigi's Mansion. I'd never, I, I heard about the game. I'd never played it. But given that it's a, a puzzle, sort of action-y adventure game, I mean, Luigi gets shafted a lot. Luigi, you know, he needs more love. So I want to play it. I want to see what it's all about. And it's kind of, it's Mario Ghostbusters. What am I complaining about, right? These are facts. Yeah. These are facts. These are frats. Facts. Facts. Um, facts. So they showed us some new moves. You have a lot more... Um, there's a lot more stuff you can do. A lot in, more stuff. in the GameCube game, you really it was just you could get them with the vacuum and then you vacuum. could pull back. Yeah. And then it was just a waiting game. Now you can actually like suplex them while they're inside you the screen. Sort of, like, whip them over. Um, you can whip them over like the Hulk does to Loki in Avengers. <laughs> um, and you have like a butt pound to like push enemies away. You have a lot more combat options. Yep. Which is cool. You have like a plunger gun where it, like. Sticks the things and then you pull it out. Love that. Yeah, that, like they can like the rope gun when thing. you can rip, rip shields away from the bad guys. Yeah, um, and well, they have the rip shields in the other two. Yeah. Okay. But they got, it, it's a different mechanic now to get get them. Yeah, definitely. So. And and you've got couch co-op. You've got um, network play. For uh, well, that, that's and, for and that's couch co-op. Couch co-op is if you're playing with <laughs> Gooigi. Gooigi. Yeah. Which Hashtag is Gooigi. which is gross, Worst. but what are you what are you gonna do? Ever. <laughs> it really is a bad name. 
I really don't like it. Like, I get what they're going for, because we all watch Ghostbusters growing up, and it's just slimy. Yeah, it's just, it's, but it, the, the name for it is just bad. But we're talking about it. Yeah. We are. It's exactly. Luigi. Um, and then there's, an, there's a horde mode, more or less, which is a yeah. tower. Yeah. Uh, you can play up to four players with your Gooigis. Yeah. And you can play through a horde mode where you got to defeat the towers in a given amount of time, and then you can move up. I think it's awesome. What? That one was in the dark mode. Oh, they had the scare tower? Or the scare scraper? Yeah. Okay. Never mind. I guess the scare scraper is yeah, not new. It's the main multiplayer mode. Okay. Well, the good news is it's back. Yep. So that is for our first time Luigi's time. Mansion 3. Okay. So, next. Um, I mean, it's time to talk about Smash. So, um, here we go. There were lots of predictions rolling around before oh, yeah. uh, the, the, the Direct itself. We had some. In fact, it's arguable that the Smash... Uh, that the Smash characters decided our prediction tournament. Mm -hmm. um, and so... I, I don't think it's arguable. I think it's, it's actually, actually the case. What fundamentally happened. what happened. Fundamentally what happened. Thanks, guys. It's fine. It's cool. So, the Smash characters were a very big deal. A lot of people were waiting. We knew that the first character, Joker, had already been decided. We were waiting for the next characters. Um, and they announced not just one, but two. Mm -hmm. So, the first one that they announced was the hero from Dragon Quest. Um, now, most the, the what's interesting about that is um, it's actually eleven different characters were added to the game. Yep. Um, even though they're all the same guy, um, they are eleven characters that are the eleven different heroes from the eleven different Dragon Quest. Are the powers the same? Yes, they are functionally the same. Okay. Um, so they're essentially the eleven different costumes. Got it. Um, for the hero, are the eleven different costumes. At the end of the day. Yes? Echo Fighters. Albert put something up and it made me very excited. Oh, Luigi good. Smash Ultimate. I need that. Yeah, I, need I need that in my life, Albert. Yeah. yeah. So, so the So they're all they, they're ultimately at the end of the day, they're all dudes with swords. Which is kind of not what people wanted. You know, a lot of people were hoping for not another guy with swords. Right. Because just about everyone from Fire Emblem uses yeah, a sword. We have um, yeah. But what are you gonna do? I think it's a cool character because of all the different options. The music is cool. Yeah. Um, so it also makes sense. Dragon Quest Eleven Echoes of Elusive Age Definitive Edition S is coming to the Switch later on this year. So it makes sense that they would add more of the characters from that game into it. Um, I really like the way they revealed it too. First, it started as him, and then he was beefing with like the whole Smash roster, yep. and then all the other guys from Dragon Quest kind of popped out from behind the rocks. His posse I, showed up. I thought that was a pretty cool concept, and honestly, I would watch that fight. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'd be, I'd be down with that. So then, at the end of the Nintendo Direct, they, um, they, they trolled the crap out of us. All of a sudden, Donkey Kong and... Um, it was Donkey Kong, King K. Rool, and, and Diddy, Diddy Kong, the three rare and characters. And there was just this big shadow in the window. And you were like, that looks exactly like Banjo. Straight up the silhouette of Banjo. And the next thing we like, we were, we were like, it's happening, finally. Because this was in our predictions for when Smash got announced. And then it was the dog from Duck Hunt. And the bird from Duck. <laughs> and and that went on for a couple seconds. And then out of nowhere, Banjo comes crashing in and beating everyone with the bird. <laughs> it's true, including the Duck yep. Dog. Exactly. Which so, the, it was a troll on top of a troll. Like yes, it was. <laughs> and now everybody's excited about Banjo. I'll yeah. be honest, I'm not super excited about Banjo. I, but but it's fine. I'm happy that he exists. It just shows us now that Microsoft is at a place where they're allowing more of their IP to go to other consoles. No so evidence just does not mean that the Master Chief is coming to Smash. It's not Albert not was happening. expecting a Dixie Kong. It's not happening. They don't share Master Chief. That that's not happening. No. But other stuff, especially the rare collection, is yeah on the table to come over to Smash. I mean, I, yeah. and not only Smash, but come over to uh, the Switch, which the rare co co 
collection is made for the Switch. Like that, right. every game on there is Switch compatible. If I look, let me get to Rare, because they actually tweeted today. Because Nintendo tweeted out um, that your favorite Bear Bird duo, Banjo and Kazooie, are joining Super Smash Brothers. And Rare tweeted this. This is actually their pinned tweet right now. Uh, it says, you asked, we listened, Nintendo were listening too, and we were happy to work with our old friends to make this one a reality. Banjo and, Ju Banjo and Kazooie are coming to Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. This is... We are in completely uncharted yeah. territory oh, yeah. where these video game companies have figured out at least partially that siloing themselves off and not cooperating Doesn't isn't work. actually helping them. In right. fact, like, like we grew up in the council wars and it's not only like are there treaties, there's straight up alliances at this yep. point. And the more and more, like the announcement last week of Microsoft, like corporate, allowing to use their cloud services. Yeah. With place Sony PlayStation and Sony being the most, like, you listen, you guys are cool with your games. We're cool with our games. Make the best stuff in the world. But now it's like they're working together. working together, and this is going to be this is not a win for them. This is a win for us. Right. And the more of that, the more like. You know, licenses going everywhere. I think better, that's money in their pocket at the end of the day. But that's my money going yeah, in their pocket. It's fun for us. And it's better and for I, us. That's where I wanted to go. You know? Yeah, mm -hmm. I get it. No, it's better for us. We get better, cooler games. Yeah. So I'm all in for that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so those are the biggest announcements. Now let's talk about some stuff that snuck the heck up on oh, all yeah. of us. Yeah, dude. Okay, if you told me mm -hmm. before the press conference started that I was going to watch them announce a Dark Crystal tactical RPG, yeah. I would have told you that you were high. Yeah, yeah. I would have been like, that is insane. There's no, they're not even going to make a video game about that license. Nope. And when the hag lady from the Dark Crystal popped in and started talking with a Netflix logo, I thought they were just telling us that Netflix yeah, came to the yeah, Switch. Exactly. Because at this point, Netflix coming to the Switch is a 100% um, E3-worthy announcement. But then, all of a sudden, they just jump cut to a bunch of Gelflings on a grid. Yeah. James, take it away, because this was, this, you stood up. Yeah, I, 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 I got very like, excited. I still am very excited. Yeah. It's Dark Crystal meets Final Fantasy Tactics. It's grid-based, squad, tactical combat. Um, do I think it's going to be as good as a Final Fantasy Tactics? No, but the IP is so dear to me, and I believe that you know Netflix and Nintendo won't mess this up. So I'm all in. I think it's gonna. I think it's gonna be great, and it's coming soon, right? I think it's coming in August. Yes. Yeah, it's coming this August, so we don't have to wait long. So you'll definitely hear more back from me and us on that when it hits. Yeah, we we were talking about like how different when we saw that Netflix logo, we're just like, well, maybe there were there was this movie that came out from the Black Mirror series called Bandersnatch, right? Which was basically an interactive movie where you chose where you went next. And the storyline, just like the books we read as kids. Yeah, it was choose your own adventure movie. Exactly. Like we were thinking, like, what's next? What do we want to see? And then. I was thrown out like we need something like you know Dragon Slayer yeah or like Space Ace like some kind of animation because you know that's what I was thinking in in the beginning when Dark Crystal got announced originally it was supposed to be an animation for right Netflix. and now it's a full and then it went full on Jim Henson Productions and we're like yes so I actually was in uh, somewhere. At when I shared the the trailer, like the most recent trailer, right? And someone said, and this was meant as a pejorative. They said that they couldn't tell where the puppets ended and the CGI started. Mm -hmm. And I was in my head, I was like, "That sounds awesome! Like that's I don't want to see." That's the best compliment exactly. you could pay them. Yeah. And but it turns out that they meant like they wanted it to only be puppets and practical effects, which I understand. That's hence in magic. But the reality is. Jim Henson, were he alive today, would be OMG oh, all right. in with these it's CGI It's 2019. Shit. Get ready yeah. for, you know, yeah. use the tools at your disposal to make the best worlds that we can get. And that's what we're going to get. Yeah, and, and it's it, going to be so and crazy. And we were talking how that, you know, what, 
what can like Nintendo do? Like what IP that it has just, been shopped over to Netflix? And you said Zelda. What? How awesome? How awesome? What a yeah. Zelda like TV? Like just because one of the issues that people have is they're worried about like the Zelda narrative, right? Right. Well. What if the narrative was choose your own adventure? Yep. Where it was well, just let's just, your let's own just remember, let's take a moment to quietly remember what the CDI did to Link. Do you not remember this? No. The worst Tell Zelda me. thing ever made? Yeah. Hey, princess. <laughs> yeah. Look this up. You got Excuse homework. Excuse me? Some of you out there know what I'm talking about. If not, it's a deep cut. You should check it out, too. It's the worst piece of garbage I've ever seen. Yeah. <gasps> Jenna's never what? seen the Dark Crystal. What? Okay, Jenna, she, get on that. We, it, we've talked about this, she and I did, and we are going to watch it before the series comes out because yeah. I think, it, I mean, it's important to watch. I'm probably not going to have Meggie watch it. I mean, no, it's not like Meggie. No, she well, will have nightmares. One more thing on the on the um, Bandersnatch, well, she's she's her adventure Gelfling. show, and she Meggie does, does look like a Gelfling. Though. She, she looks um, very Gelfling as Albert. Albert says, I would love a Zelda show in all caps. Yeah. So, anyway, so would we. Yeah, I, listen. It, We've been asking you for it. It sidesteps years. all of the problems that people normally have with a Zelda narrative. Because if everyone's right. narrative is different, then it's just a different kind of video game. Right, correct. Mm -hmm. And I just think it would be a different and interesting way to express the visuals. Right? I'd like to see a Bandersnatch-style choose-your-own-adventure Captain N, the Nintendo Master... I uh, was the game master. The game master, yes. Dude. I used to call him the Ninny Master. I was a Sega guy. Of course, he was a Sega guy. Of course, I was a Sega guy. But I'm of here. Of course, he was a Sega guy, man. But I, now there's the alliances, you know. Sonic, Sonic, Sonic Switch. Switch. Listen, I'm still. But yeah. then I got the Super Nintendo. All right, well that's know? fine. It's fine. I was. About I to have both. I was about like... to kick you both out. Remember, we're both like the we're veterans of the console wars. These are these <laughs> scars. I was in all of them. Yeah. Okay. So, um, now that's about all for Nintendo's announcements. Yeah. But we've got one more thing I want to talk about. We can't possibly just Hold forget. Oh. We got we got a question. Rachel has a question. Is is there still no party chat option on this? There they did not announce no anything. System updates. They did announced. not talk about that. So no. With but that six, said, sixteen person party chat is coming to PS4. This is the Nintendo show, which is crazy. Stay on brand. We're. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't work um, for Nintendo. With that said, um, yeah, one more thing. To yeah, talk I know. About. But before that, with that said, to answer, we are going to be have we are going to have a Discord server. Um, that will facilitate voice chat between us and we want our kids to chat and stuff like that. So I'm getting that set up and it will be set up probably uh, by the end of the month. So there's that. If that helps. I know that's not exactly what people wanted, but I'm doing the best I can. But it helps. So um, we can't close without talking about the, the dark magic that Nintendo did to get The Witcher 3, the complete edition onto a Switch cartridge and somehow release it for the Nintendo Switch. Yeah. They, How did they do it? Magic. They sacrificed a person. Yeah. They literally... There's someone that does not exist and never existed to make Whoa. that into one memory card. Yeah. Yeah. So every time... You heard it here first, folks. If you buy The Witcher 3 for the Switch, you're just zeroing out another part of humanity. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, that, which is kind of on brand for The Witcher 3, actually. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, obviously this game is not for the kids. And I don't think that it's, you know, so people who want this it's game... It's more about the innovation that yeah, we're talking about. The fact that I can take The Witcher about the, with like, me everywhere I go. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, that's it, bananas. It's argu I mean, it's arguably one of the best role-playing like games ever made. Like, Sky, Skyrim yeah. was a big get. But this is this has but a this is more like way fidelity. More. Yeah. yeah, exactly. There's and way, way more, more fidelity. Yeah. So, the uh, my my wife just threw up a bunch of exclamation points. I, I, maybe my wife. I know my wife was actually kind of interested in The Witcher, um, but I don't know. Uh, but like I said, it's not for kids. No. But anytime someone says to me that a game in the, if this runs, which we're gonna find out soon, if it runs even passably well, right. Because I'm not necessarily a, a graphics guy, so I, if I think it runs okay, you might have problems with it. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm, but, I'm, I'm willing to accept a little downgrade for the Switch. But if if I think it runs well and it's relatively smooth, there's no excuse. If The Witcher 3 can run on the Switch, 
uh, what can't? Right. The Witcher 3 is bananas. The, the entire map of Breath of the Wild fits in one map on yeah. The Witcher 3. And it has like six. Yeah. And that's not including the DLC. Right. Um, it's just bananas. So we had to talk about that. If for nothing else, the innovation involved in that, the amount of ma- wizardry that they it's, took. There's more possibilities for the Switch. It's not like, oh, I'll never play that game on Switch. We can't say that anymore. We said this morning, before this announcement, the Witcher will never come to Switch. I said those words, and we all yeah. agree. And so nothing's impossible now. Nothing is off the table. Yeah, that's it. So that's it. That is our Nintendo daily update. It's actually the last daily update. We'll do another live show tomorrow when we announce our games of the show. Yep. Um, but until then, uh, unless there's any questions from the chat... Uh, I think we are done. Yeah. It's time for us to get back to work. Yeah. So please remember... Don't forget... To get your family game on. Bye. 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 Hello, everyone, and welcome to a special edition of Engage, a family gaming podcast. My name is Steven Dutzman, and I am your host, as always... Engage Family Gaming is a website on the internet where parents like myself and my co-hosts come together to give everyone the information they need to get their family game on. I am here in the E3 War Room with my good friends, James the Video Guy. Hey guys. And John the Fair and Just Commissioner. As always. And Jonathan Tomlinson, the man behind the curtain. Former champion. Former champion. Of E3. (laughs) Former champion. Former champion. So, um, it's the last day. We're getting ready to go. Um, But we wanted to do one last podcast. Uh, Specifically, uh, we wanted to talk about uh, some indie games. Fortunately, we went through all the different press conferences, and there's actually a... Podcast for each of the major um, each of the major companies, but we wanted to celebrate some indie games a little bit. Fortunately, um, kind of funny. The uh, there are a bunch of YouTubers. They have a YouTube channel. They're not appropriate for children, uh, but they did a. I don't want to call it a press conference. They did a showcase where they focused on indie games. They had over sixty indie games. I told you guys we were going to watch it, and I remember when I told you that, that, that I was putting it on the schedule, you guys were like, what the hell are you talking about? Why are we watching these YouTubers that you're fa- such a fanboy for? And I halfway explained, but then you understood after we watched it. At the very least, it was a 40, minute wet, 40 minutes, and we all found something that we liked. Agreed. Or so, laughed at. Like or There was plenty at. of stuff that was just amusing and... You know, yeah, it genuinely so, funny. Yeah. Um, Would you say it was kind of funny? funny? A little bit. A little oh, bit. Oh, wow. I mean, I agree. There, it was at least kind of funny. So I thought we would go around the horn, as it were, and each of us would share uh, a couple of the indie games that we thought were uh, kind of... Imp- had. The, I mean, I don't know if the best, because we haven't played any of these, mm-hmm. the ones that caught our attention the most. So... Let's get started. John, who uh, do you want to talk about first? So uh, the first one I wanted to talk about was a little game called Adam's Ascending. Mm -hmm. Uh, This is one of those great stories about like one guy making one game in his basement. Mm -hmm. But it's one of those open world adventure type games. Yep. Kind of like Portal, but like third person over the shoulder, like, uh, you know, all, all those other were like walking simulator type games. And those kind of games just get me, like stuff like Gone Home, uh, Tacoma, which is also in uh, Xbox Game Pass right now. Those are like little indies where like you're just getting a story and, you know, doing puzzles to move on to the next room. Um, those really get me. And the, the fact that it's just one dude, including him doing the voiceover is just amazing. So, uh, Adam's Ascending, and I believe it's coming out on Steam. And, uh, yeah, that's all I know about that one. All right, so that is Adam's Ascending. It is being made by one guy. I think all of us were were impressed. Yeah. Um, this is one where it was actually appeared in the first 
kind of funny showcase. They did one back in December. Um, and so now it's getting closer and closer to release. So uh, it, I, I think it looks pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, so the next one up is you, John. Fair and Just Commissioner. What do you got? So the first one that, that really hit me was Trigger Witch. <laughs> okay. By, by Rainbite. Uh, it's a, a 2D twin stick adventure game. It, it's in a land where magic is the norm, but guns are not. <laughs> so instead of using magic to defeat your enemies, you use guns. Um, in fact, the first thing that they do is they show this rather cute looking little witch person with a purple hat and there's a blob in front of her instead of casting a spell she pulls out a tommy gun and <laughs> destroys the blob of slime and it is fantastic looks like there's going to be plenty of room for upgrades of types of guns and scatter shot bouncing things off walls it just looks like a lot of fun it, it reminded us all a lot of um Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past. Was it A Link to the Past? Yeah, it looked like yeah. A Link to the Past. Yeah, yeah, that's what the map looks like. And it just looks like a good time. It looks like just a, a game you can Just have that with that. guns. With with guns instead of, you know, bows and arrows. Anything that turns a, a, a common trope on its head is, is usually interesting, so I agree. I agree. Yeah, I can't wait to play that one. I mean, I hope there's some kind of multiplayer. I don't know why, but I just really want to play that. Um, so, James, what do you got? So one of the games I saw in in the uh, in their presentation was a game called Super Liminal. Um, it's by Pillow Castle Games, and it instantly made me think of Stanley Parable. Stanley Parable, which is one of my favorite games ever on PC. You know, little game if you ever played it. If not, I highly su uh, suggest it. Seems kind of basic, kind of you know ordinary at first, but it's far from ordinary. Um, a lot of, vis um, what do you call it, uh, optical illusions, mm -hmm. a lot of stuff where you're looking at a wall, you move your perspective, and what looks to be random garbage on the wall becomes something like a house, which then becomes a physical object that you can walk through, mm -hmm. kind of mind-bending puzzles, a little bit like Portal, uh, just something new, something different than your, your average everyday game, and, and that's what I'm always looking for. Yeah, I agree. I was watching that trailer and I immediately was like, yeah, I'm too dumb to play this game. <laughs> like, I just don't know if I have it in me. I'm excited to see it played and I think it'll be, you know, make some cool videos on the internet, but man, I'm way too dumb uh, to make that happen. Because um, any every time I played a game like that, like these kind of MC Escher, like, I, I can handle uh, Monument Valley. And that's about as deep as I yeah, that, can get. After that, it, it's, I start to struggle. This is that in 3D space. I mean, it's, it really is. You hit it on the head. It's MC Escher meets, you know, every day at the office. Yeah. I, I, I'm i going to have to pass on that one myself just because I'm dumb. But I'm glad that you <laughs> found something that you like. Um, I want to talk about my first one, and that is Looking for Heels from Blue Bomber Games. It's available in early access on Steam right now. It's on sale for like 13 bucks. Um, you play a healer. You assemble a group of AI minions, dwarves and orcs and other kind of warriors, and you send them off to fight, and it is your job to heal them. Um, this is my game. Um, I am always the healer. I play the healer in every game that I can, um, and this is a game where literally that's the entire point. I'm not like subverting expectations or anything. I'm literally just playing the game. So I uh, super cannot wait to get my hands on this one. Um, I don't have my PC here, so I can't play it here. Um, but as soon as I have access to a PC, I'll be buying this and playing it. So that's looking for heels. Uh, man behind the curtain, what do you have next? So my next was a little like, uh, it was an MMO like roguelike called Relic Hunters Legends. And it just, it, it's one of those like, um, you know, group battle systems where you're, you're just running around. Um, you had like uh, crazy like medieval armor and stuff, but you also had like guns and there was like spark and laser like type weaponry. And it just looked like fun. Uh, and it's also free to play okay. and uh, available. I believe it was Steam Early Access. Something that surprised me about that game mm -hmm. was that, because um, it looks fairly simple, right? It's yeah. It's kind of a simplistic art style. 
but they promise very deep RPG systems. Now, anyone exactly. can say that, but if an, if an indie game delivers on that, on, on stuff that brings me deeper to the game, then I'm excited. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I, the, the, I like the simplistic art style, right? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, it's not going to tax my computer. I'll be able to run it. Maybe more of my friends will be able to run it. Um, I like it. I think it's fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. One of their little taglines, it's about touching story about friendship and time travel. Who doesn't want that? Where'd that come from, though? Like, yeah. This is a random Battle Royale game. It is, uh, that's what they're saying. It's, uh, and free, it's got friendship and, and time travel? Free online adventure. Join with up to three friends and save the galaxy from a terrible villain who has stolen the past. Super awkward. Yeah, I love the character models. This looks fun. Yeah. yeah. This looks fun. We'll be uh, taking a look at it. So, uh, Kamish, what do you got? Hamsterdam. <laughs> Not the episode of The Wire. Not the yeah. episode of The Wire. All right, so tell me about Hamsterdam. Hamsterdam is with hamsters. Um, you are a kung fu hamster looking to take back your city from an evil chinchilla mob boss. Because apparently chinchillas are evil. I did not know that, but now I do. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is... They have no chill? Very... I mean, potentially. <laughs> potentially. Um, <laughs> yeah. I just killed the whole thing. <laughs> killed the whole joke. Way to go, man behind the curtain. That's what I do. Just brought the curtain down. No, you are you are a very cartoony. You are the hero, the hamster, mm-hmm. using 80 style kung fu to battle the evil chinchilla's minions. And it just looks like a lot of fun. It looks cute. It looks fast. It looks entertaining. Anybody can play it. It's for Switch, mobile, and uh, PC. And that is coming out very soon, actually. August 1st. Yeah. You know what? We actually had that um, after PAX East. um, Amanda Farrow, one of the co-hosts on this podcast, mentioned that game. Um, It was obviously an earlier build, um, and she loved it. I'm so excited that it's coming out, and it's only a month or so away. Very thrilled to uh, get a chance to play that one. Um, my second, video guy. Yeah. What's your second one? So my second one is called Brave Earth Prologue. Um, this game touches all of the 8-bit Metroidvania uh, touchstones that I want it to. As soon as I saw it, I was in nostalgia heaven. Um, it just... You know, and, and weirdly enough, I know people don't mention games like this when they talk about 8-bit a lot, but Rastan from Sega was a game that, that, kind of, that came to mind. Very similar aesthetic. So think Rastan meets Castlevania. Um, what else were they talking about? Let's see. Yeah, to the point that some of the bricks that are like the platforms that you jump across look exactly like um, the bricks in Castlevania 1. Yeah, no, I mean, this game is clearly inspired by that. It's out on Steam. Um, the... It, it's it, it's they say that it's heavily inspired by like eight bit NES games and it obviously is but it's it's not quite eight bit I mean this is definitely a, a fancier game I love this game I'm gonna I'm definitely gonna play it There's three playable characters okay so that was Brave Earth Prologue uh, I'm gonna talk about my second game here um, I'm gonna talk about Skatebird. Uh, this is a game by Glass Bottom Games. I've had this game suggested to me at every show I have been at for the last you know year. Essentially, it is a Tony Hawk style skateboarding game where instead of a person in a full size skate park, you are a small bird skateboarding on a skate park that is on a desk, basically. Um, I know that sounds absurd, and it is. However, um, this is a—it's an adorable game. From my understanding, I actually haven't gotten my hands on the sticks on this yet, but it is a the the controls are smooth, and it feels just like a skateboarding game did back in their heyday. Obviously, they're gone now; they don't really make them anymore, for you know, for the most part. But this feels like those games did, and also it's adorable because you're a cute little bird. Um, and it's called Skatebird, and I approve of those kinds of, uh, that, that amount of wordplay. You know what I mean? 
That's fair. Yeah. So, I mean, what's crazy about this is it the last time I played a game that was similar, it, re- it actually reminds me of the worst review that I ever gave. John, do you remember the worst game that I ever reviewed? I mean, it was a pretty slow game called Turbo. I don't know if I would call it slow. John, do you, John, the, the, the commish. Oh, I know what you, I know what you're getting. <laughs> commish, do you remember the movie uh, Turbo about the snail that falls into the nitrous oxide and turns into a race car? Yes. It races in the Indy 500. Yeah, I believe Snoop Dogg was in that movie as well. I think he was. <laughs> so, was Martha Stewart also in that movie? I don't know. I don't think so. Been, that would have been their friends. So, okay. That's the pitch for the movie, which wasn't super great. But they made a licensed tie-in game for this back in the Wii PS3 era. And I rented that movie tie-in game so that I could review it for the site. Now, when you think of a movie tie-in game about a video game, or a movie tie-in game about a movie about a snail that races in the Indy 500, what kind of game do you think it would be? I don't know. Racing? Yeah. That's what I thought, too. It turns out that it was a skateboarding game where you and the as the different snails race around these different environments like a burrito shop and a, a workshop. This apparently in the movie they spend a lot of time at a burrito shop. I don't know. I don't know how good the burritos are in Indianapolis, but here we are. Um, it was terrible. It wasn't what I was hoping for, um, and it wasn't even really a good skateboarding game. But the reason that I bring it up is that since the snails are all small. Everything that they were racing in was like a can of soda at the burrito stand was like this massive tree trunk. And so... So like Micro Machines. It was like Micro Machines machines kind of stuff. So, and the bird is very similar, right? Like it's skateboarding on very small environments where the scale matters. And I don't know why, but I just think that adds to it a little bit, makes it a little bit more whimsical. Um, It's also, it's a game about trying your best. It's very supportive. So when you wipe out, you immediately get back up on the board and keep going. I'm, I'm a fan of that. Yeah. So, it, sounds, it looked like fun. Yeah, I mean, it's coming soon. Um, I think it's on Steam or will be on Steam very soon, but it's going to come to everything. This game is going to draw some attention. Yeah. Um, Are you going to be able to play, like, different characters or anything like that? I think there's only going to be just the one, but I don't know. No? So, I mean, it is Steam. Will they allow, you think, like, DLC later? Yeah. Where, like, you could you come in as a, as a raptor named Anthony. <laughs> uh, no, I don't think that they'll let that. Maybe a hawk named Tony. <laughs> Zing. <laughs> On that note, folks, I hope you have enjoyed listening to our list of indie games from E3, uh, just as much as we enjoyed recording it. Hope you guys have a great week. Uh, we will be back next week with board games and more information about Origins Game Fair, because guess what? We go from one crazy convention to another one. (laughs) So until next time, don't forget to get your family game on. Bye, everybody. See ya. Bye. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening. Tune in next week.